Hi everyone, today I want to show you a method of joining your granny squares as you go, which means there is no more crocheting separate squares and sewing them or crocheting them together when you're done. Once you join them, you save all that time of joining them separately after you've made them. And also I feel like you end up with a much more secure join because your squares are joined as you're working. This tutorial works with any size square, any thickness yarn. Um, I'm not going to show you how to make a granny square, so if you don't already know how, then I have a tutorial on how to make a perfectly square granny square that I'll link up at the top now. And without further ado, grab your hook, grab your yarn, and let's get joining. Before we get started with our joining, just a couple of quick pointers. I work my granny square blankets from the top left hand corner downwards and normally finish my blankets in the bottom right hand corner if you prefer to work them in a different direction from right to left that's completely up to you this is just the direction that I work in when you are joining your granny squares you want to have the right side of the final round facing you so that your stitches are matching up to the one that you are joining you can make your granny squares as big or as small as you like but for this tutorial I'm just doing small three round granny squares which actually happen to be my favorite to use for granny square projects because I just love how tiny they are so with granny squares you make your first one in its entirety as you normally would make your granny square and then to start joining I have made the first two rounds of this granny square and the first side of my third round. If you've watched my other tutorial you will know that I chain two for my granny square corners. When we're joining to the top edge you want to first chain one And instead of chaining the second chain for your corner, you will pop your hook into the corner space of the square that you are joining to. You want to yarn over, pull up a loop through that corner space and join it with a slip stitch. Then it's often easier just to let that square that we're joining to just dangle behind you. And then you want to finish working your corner in the same way that you would if you hadn't joined it to that purple square. So it's three double crochets back into that same corner gap. So once you've done your granny cluster, instead of going and working on next, you want to find the corresponding gap on the square that you are joining to. In our case, the first one. You want to pop your hook into that yarn over, pull up a loop and join to that square with a slip stitch. Then you want to work your next set of granny clusters as normal into that next space along, almost ignoring the fact that you have joined to that square. And then again, if we are not reaching the corner yet, you want to pop your hook through, yarn over, pop your loop through and then just do a little slip stitch. Now, when I am working the top edge of a blanket like I am here, we're imagining this is the top edge of the beginning of our blanket. These two corners here, I don't join. I let them dangle. So when we're working the next section, you want to work your set of three double crochet for your first granny cluster of the corner. Ignore the fact we're joining, chain two, and carry on working the corner as normal. Do not join those two corners together, and you will see why I tell you to do this when we go ahead and join our next square. So I'm going to carry on and finish this square, and I will meet you back when we're ready to join our next square to our project. I've now finished this blue square and you can see that it is joined nice and firmly to the left hand side purple square that we first started with for our blanket. And then when you're working the rest of this top edge, you would carry on working in exactly the same manner that we joined this blue square all the way along until your blanket is as wide as you want it to be.
Next, I want to show you how we join a square to the bottom edge and also to make sure that it's joined to its diagonal partner. So I've gone ahead and I have my ready-made granny square here. Again, I am on the final round and I've worked the first side. Normally when I work corners on granny square projects, I chain two. When I am joining to the diagonal like I do here, I want a little bit more give. So we're going to chain one, pop our hook into the square diagonally across from where we are joining. In our case, that's the blue square. Pop your hook through, pull up a loop and join it with a slip stitch like that. So we are joining to its diagonal friend. We're not joining to the one that we're actually going to be joining the side against. We want to slip stitch to its diagonal partner. Then we're going to work one chain. That corner is worked as one chain, slip stitch and another chain. Then you want to work the rest of your corner as normal back into that corner space, almost ignoring the fact that we've just joined to that blue corner. And then you want to find the corresponding gap on the purple square. So you want to find the first gap after the corner clusters. Pop your hook in, draw up your loop and just make that into a slip stitch to join it. And you can see that they've already joined. Work all the way along your edge, working your sets of three double crochet in the same way you would when you were making a granny square without joining it. And when you get to each gap along the edge, you want to just join it with a slip stitch to its partner gap on the square that we're working on, like that. Now we are imagining that this edge here is going to be the left hand edge of our blanket. So here on this square, you can remember that we chained one and then slip stitched. In this case, what we are going to do is we're going to start the corner off as we would with our three double crochets. Then instead of chaining one and then slip stitch, because we want to keep this edge nice and straight, we are going to first slip stitch into that corner gap. Because this is a side edge, if this wasn't a side edge, we wouldn't slip stitch into that corner gap. So you want to work your slip stitch and then a chain one and then finish your corner off as if you hadn't just joined to the square above. And then as with the previous square, I'm going to go ahead and finish off this one and then I'll show you how we join our next square. Our yellow square is now finished. It's joined to its purple partner and you can see that by joining to this diagonal corner here, it is straightening out and producing a really nice secure join for those corners and it basically self blocks the squares. You can see that we've left its corner hanging because when we work the square that will go in here, we will join not just to this diagonal corner here, but we will join to this diagonal corner here. So I'm going to go away and I'm going to add another square onto this edge here because I want to show you how we would join a square when we are working a bigger blanket. But this next square that I will join that happens to be a green one is worked in exactly the same way that we did that first square. So I'm going to go and join that and I'll come back and show you how we work this square here. As you can see, I've now added a green square on. I like all of my diagonal slip stitches to face in the same way. So when I am joining a square here, I could have just left this corner dangling and then joined it with a slip stitch diagonally when I added the green square. But because I want my slip stitches all facing in the same direction, I opted to add a square on before I show you how to infill this. If you were making a blanket, you would probably go on and make your top edge first and then your second row start. And then it would just be fairly easy to work all the way along and to join the squares. But because I've got a small sample here, I needed to go away and add this square. So once again, I have another square ready to add and I have worked the first two rounds and the first row of the final round. Because we're joining diagonally, 
we want to again chain one pop our hook into the square that we are diagonally joining to so diagonally to the right upwards put a loop through and join it with a slip stitch and then again because we are joining diagonally we just want to work another chain so when you're joining diagonally it's chain one slip stitch chain one then work the rest of your corner cluster back into that square and then as per all the other squares that we've done so far you want to find the first gap after the corner cluster on the square you're joining to draw up a loop through that gap and join it with a slip stitch like that and then work all the way along in the same way no matter how big your square is it's this method that you work your three double crochets join to the square with a slip stitch and carry on so on and so forth so here we have the next gap we're again going to join with a slip stitch and then we're going to work the first three double crochets of our corner space When we get to this corner, you can see that we have already joined our corner to the blue square with the yellow square diagonally. So we are aiming to join our square here to the square diagonally to the left. And again, to give us a little bit more room, we want to work that chain one. Grab your work and pop your hook over the slip stitch we've worked and into the chain two gap from the corner of the square diagonally upwards then you want to draw up a loop and turn that loop into your slip stitch to join your corner then you want to give yourself that room again by chaining one and then working the rest of your corner back into that corner section of your previous square. Now you'll notice with this square, we're joining two sides. So after we've finished off that corner, we want to find the first gap after the corner on the yellow square, pull up a loop and join it with a slip stitch. And we want to work all the way along doing the same thing. In my case, I've only got two gaps to work, so I'm working tiny grannies. Again, pop it in, pull up a loop, join with a slip stitch. Once we get to the corner, we work our three double crochet. And then if you are carrying on working downwards, you do not join these two together. So in this case, we will chain two and carry on working that corner, leaving those corners dangling like we did on the other squares, ready for them to be joined diagonally with another row. And then finish off your square. When you've joined two sides, it will only just be this bottom edge that you have to work to finish off the square. Now I'm going to go away and add a couple more squares so that I can show you how we work the bottom edge of the blanket when we're joining and also the right hand side edge. So I will meet you back when I've added a couple more squares and I can show you what we're doing next. I've now added some more squares and what I need you to now imagine is that this is the world's smallest blanket but we have now made our left edge and we've made our top edge and we're wanting to finish off our side row and our bottom row to make our blanket complete. So first of all, I'm going to show you how we fill in the right hand side edge. So in the, pretty much the same way 
that we do the top edge you want to have your chain one on the outer edge so again I've made another square almost ready here so we are going to chain one and join to the outside edge here again with just our slip stitch like we would on any other square then you want to work the rest of your corner it can get a bit fiddly once your blanket gets a little bit bigger work the rest of your corner into that gap on your square Work your slip stitches for the gaps all the way along, making sure that they are in the right gap. Now we're at a corner gap now and just like we would with any other squares we have obviously left the diagonal corner dangling when we've joined this orange square here so we want to chain one pop our hook into the chain two space from the diagonal square draw up a loop to pull through a slip stitch and then chain one again so we're working just that extra stitch in our corners when we're joining diagonally the rest of the square is just joined in exactly the same way as before working those slip stitches into every single gap and just double checking that your squares are lined up so that the two granny clusters match and then because this is an internal corner it's not at the bottom of our blanket we're still going to leave this corner dangling here Just chaining two for the corners when you're working a normal corner gap there so i'll finish off this square now we're going to imagine that we are working the bottom row of our blanket so we obviously don't want to leave these corners dangling we want them nice and tightly joined like we have on every other outer edge when you're joining them you treat them exactly the same as any of the other squares you just want to make sure that you pick up this corner when you are crocheting round so again because we are working a diagonal join here we want to chain one work our slip stitch to join it to the diagonal corner chain once more and finish off our corner back into that corner gap there match up your clusters with the square that you're joining and by the time you get to this stage it should be pretty second nature by now join it with a slip stitch and work into that next gap with your three double crochets that make up our granny square again slip stitch through and join on bigger squares it could be easy it can be easier not to line them up by accident so just make sure that you are making sure that these clusters are all lined up to the correct portion on the equivalent square now we come to our corner gaps we're going to work the first granny cluster of our corner chain one
want to pop your hook into the corner gap from the yellow square, draw up a loop and pull through to form a slip stitch. Then because we're diagonally joining, we want to work one more chain and then finish off our corner back into that square. Slip stitch through. And work our next granny cluster. Slip stitch. Then because this is our bottom edge, we're going to work the first half of the corner and then instead of not joining the corners like we have been doing in the middle of our work we want to join to this corner in the corresponding square with a slip stitch first and then a chain one and then finish off our corner and that is how you work your join as you go. A couple of key things to remember. If you are joining first and then you come to a corner, you do your slip stitch and then you chain. If you are on a top row and you have worked your first edge and before you do anything, you're joining a corner, you chain first and then you slip stitch. Same with this side here, you would chain first and then you slip stitch. So top row, right row, chain first, then slip stitch, left row, bottom row, slip stitch, then chain one. And you literally just build your blanket up like that. You don't have to be as obsessive as I am about having your slip stitches all face in the same direction. You know, you can go and join them however you like. This method works in all of those ways. You don't need to stress about necessarily having them in the same direction. But I do think it just gives that tiny little extra bit of neatness if you do join them all in the same direction. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up if you have, and I'll see you again for another tutorial soon. Bye!